Grace and peace. I'm Brian Moser, the Baptist Campus Minister at Drexel University, and this is Peace and Power, the peace of Jesus Christ to change your life, the power of the Holy Spirit to change the world. And we are looking at the good news. The gospel is good news for every person and every part of life. And one of the ways we've been looking at this is each week we've been we were examining these five question areas: relationships, lifestyle, purpose, belonging, and beliefs. And I've been trying to connect the gospel to a current relevant, relative, relevant issue. Um, some of those issues have been how we handle COVID, how we handle racism, how we handle politics and fake news, how we handled suicide, how we took care of the environment, and some other things going on there in the future, how the gospel affects our look at the future. And I believe last week the question we handled was, was Jesus the only way? Now, this topic is a little less intense than some of those others, but it's still very important and much talked about in the news these ways. And it will get a little political, but not that. I'm going to steer us away from the actual politics of this conversation, but it will be based on student loans. Several of the political candidates have expressed an opinion of whether student loans should be forgiven or they should not be forgiven. And I have some opinions about that. Now, some of those opinions are based on how it would stimulate the economy if we forgave loans for some of our younger constituents or how we can, how we can actually preemptively try to reinforce a part of our economy that is on the verge of a major financial crisis, something akin to the collapse of the housing market. But I don't think that's important when we're looking at the gospel. We call it student loan forgiveness. And one of the major arguments I've been encountering against student loan forgiveness is that people will say in some way or another that the students with these loans don't deserve them to be forgiven. Some of them will say, well, I took out loans and I was able to pay back mine. Or others will say, well, they should have been more careful when getting into the loans in the first place. And others will say, well, if we forgive these loans, how will it affect other people's loans to be forgiven? They don't deserve to be forgiven. And I'll respond exactly because that's what forgiveness is. And I can, and interestingly enough, I start talking about the gospel and the central theme of forgiveness in the gospel based on student loan debt. We talk about forgiving student loans. And how we define this word forgiveness is very important. And in the gospel message, we see that forgiveness is always a gift and that it is never deserved. So as we look at these student loans and we think about forgiving them, of course it's not deserved. That is what forgiveness is. But we can use that conversation to enter into the fact that Jesus forgives us of our sins and we did not deserve that. That's what forgiveness is. Secondly, forgiveness is always a choice of the one who needs to forgive, the one in power. God chose to forgive us through Jesus. I once had some issues with a girlfriend and she asked me to forgive her. Now she didn't deserve it. And in my head, I'm like, but she doesn't deserve to be forgiven. And God clearly says, of course she doesn't. That's why she needs forgiveness. But then I had to ultimately come to the decision to choose to forgive her. 
God decided to forgive us. It was God's choice to do that through Christ. There is, we can't decide to be forgiven unless someone over us whom we have for offended, who we owe a debt, our creditor in some way chooses to forgive us. So also in the student loan conversation, I see a lot of students with loans demanding to be forgiven. That's not their choice. It's us as a people who hold the debt, the creditors who could, if they so choose, for decide to forgive that. That is their choice. Also in this, and this is kind of the final point, forgiveness can never be earned, forced, or demanded by the one who needs to be forgiven. Now, I can put myself in such a position that I might make forgiveness easier for another human being. Or these students can handle their loans in such a way that it might look better for us and make it easier for us to forgive them. But the one who needs to be forgiven can never earn forgiveness because forgiveness is never deserved. They can never force or demand forgiveness because forgiveness is always a choice of the one who, who is owed, not the one who owes. So I hope you can see that even a conversation about something as relevant as something as intricate as student loan debt can be a conversation that you can enter into and bring up the gospel in a certain way because it revolves around this word forgiveness, which is central to the gospel. And the better you understand the gospel, the easier it will be to talk about gospel-related ideas in these relevant topics and issues. Next time you're debating anything revolving around forgiveness, that is a good place to actually start steering the conversation towards what does it mean to be forgiven, which will ultimately lead you into a discussion that is primed for a presentation on the gospel. As always, there are two ways to join this conversation, live Monday night, 7 p.m. via Zoom, Weekly wrap-ups on YouTube and WordPress, all that information will be in the description below. And I am all over social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WordPress. Those links are in the description as well. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to continue this conversation sometime very soon.